we have seen ICT tools for the use of evaluation. Now let us see ICT tools which can be used for research. A researcher today is really very lucky to have so many tools available to him or her at various levels. For example, the researcher can make use of online databases because that is the first requisite one would like to see the related review, related literature and then take a call what kind of variables, what kind of research he or she wants to plan. So online databases are available. There are many web tour tools available, social media available to the researcher. We will see that which are these and we will start exploring them. There are many ICT tools available to a researcher even for data collection. For example, for collecting questionnaire kind of a tool and the data through such tools, instead of sending it by post, we can use it a tool called SurveyMonkey. So on that, people are invited to respond and the data is collected at one point. There are online tools for data analysis as well or even statistical software available today for statistical analysis. Once the research is done, the report is written, people would like to share that and there are tools and platforms where one can share. Let us see some of these tools in detail and then you can explore them further. Use of web tour tools for research. Now while doing research, people also would like to create, to share, to explore, to analyze, variety of things are done at various steps. One such tool for creating information or knowledge is called blog. A blog is a tool, it's like an online diary. But diary people do not want others to read. Here people want the blog to read. And now they write on this blog. For what purpose the blog can be used? Blog can be used for reflecting. It can be used as a reflective journal. It can be used for expressing creativity. It can be used for synthesizing thoughts. It can be used for getting feedback, collaborating, thinking, being, sharing. Lot of things can be done through blogs. And there are many sites which allow you to create your own blog and to use it. Some of them are written here, Blogger, WordPress, Tumblr, Posterous, and many others where you can go, you can create your own account and start blogging. It is very easy to create one blog and start writing, but you have to invite people. As a researcher, you may be interested that people with similar interest in the research area would like to visit your blog, comment on it, give you feedback and the knowledge can be co-created. ResearchGate is another platform for the researcher where you can share your thoughts, your findings. Also, basically you can create a community. It is a community created by scientists for scientists. And the major thought is that through collaboration, we can learn a lot. Together we can develop, together we can generate knowledge. There are many other tools for researcher to create and to share. For example, postgraduate toolbox. Variety of tools are given method space, nature network, you can go on exploring them. Every platform, every site has its own speciality, its own special features. So for a researcher, there are many such sites available which can be made use. Researcher also likes to share at variety of stages. This sharing is also for getting feedback. So there are many sites, many social tools, social media available to a researcher where you can share, where you can post. For example, SlideShare is one such platform where you can upload your slides. When you upload, you can have a choice whether you want people only to see it or whether you want people to download as well. That is in the hands of the person who wants to upload. So this kind of control is already there. But if you are creating an open source, open educational resources, then it is better that we allow people to download. There is another site called Script. There also we can publish our presentations, our papers, anything which we have created. Ublisher is 
another wonderful site where you can create your own newsletters, your own brochures, your own publication. Basically, it allows you to publish and share it with the large number of people who may be interested in the area of your own interest. There are thousands of such tools available to a researcher. So it is not really pertinent here to give you a big list of such tools and such sites. You can explore them and start using. Once you use them, then you will know the special features, the characteristics and whether to continue with it or not. But basically, remember that research, though it is an individual activity, other people who are interested in this area do help at various levels. In order to get that help, feedback, support, sharing of thoughts, these social media or tools and sites will be useful. Before closing this session, I would like to once again reiterate the need for creating open education resources. The sites which we have seen help us to share, help us to publish, help us to create knowledge. Similarly, if we create something on our own, we also should be able to allow others to use that free of cost. This is called open educational resources. Can we start from ourselves? When I teach, I prepare a presentation. When I teach, I prepare a quiz. I prepare an essay. I may be preparing self-learning material. All these resources for every topic which I teach in a class. Now this resource lies with me. Can I make it available to others? Yes, of course, we can if we think. So open education resource, as we have already discussed, it's a big movement and everyone must contribute to that. Then only this movement can really take shape. And as we have seen earlier, the cost of higher education will come down to 15% because then we will be only charging about services. So my request to all of you, the teachers, trainers, experts, researchers, whoever is seeing this session, please think about contributing to the pool of open educational resources. Thank you.